God does not guarantee us everlastingly calm seas and prosperous voyages. Even the Apostle Paul was shipwrecked three times. Many people feel disillusioned about this very thing. They do what is right and suffer for it. But we need not worry. The trouble which comes when God puts us where He wants us is a miracle in the making. What is a miracle? Just a rare event of such great magnitude that it silences critics. Many people don't recognize a miracle when they see one. Christ fed the multitude of a boy's lunch basket and then the wise and learned demanded that he show them a miracle. Jesus said that people would not believe even if someone would rise from the dead. The carnal mind is too dulled to receive the things of God, but sharp enough to rationalize all the works of God. Miracle in scripture is a simple word meaning a work of power, just that. It is not the absurd magic of Roman myth which our word miracle really signifies. Miracles are things all believers should experience constantly the power of God at work in our lives 365 miracle packed days every year 366 in a leap year we don't appreciate how divine some events are God conceals his hand he does not sound a trumpet before him when he makes the grass grow or when he works for us. Too often we hear Christians relating what the devil has done as if the devil was more active than the Lord. Maybe Satan's style is more showy to impress us, but God goes to the heart of the matter, which is to satisfy his heart of love. Why is it that so many good Christians never personally experience the miracle working power of God in their lives? They sit so faithfully in their seats at church, listening to the best preachers, even weeping, praying and confessing, Lord, I believe. They hear the word and believe it. Then what? They just sit there waiting for Jesus to do something, praying, Lord, send the power, and he passes by their boats. In all my years of ministry, there is one thing I have learned. Mm -hmm. If we want things to happen, we must get out of our boats and move in line with Jesus walking the waves. He is calling us. He doesn't say, hold tight. I'll soon come across and be with you in the boat. He says, come. What? On the water? Yes, that is where the miracles happen. Mm -hmm. To see God in action, we must be in action ourselves, whether we rock the boat or not. Don't worry about the doubters whom we may disturb. If we are comfortably settled in unchallenging company where there is no real obedience of faith, then we must jump over the side, right over human opinion, and make for Jesus out there in the miracle waters. Obedience puts the plug in and the 
power begins to work. It is the final connection. Remember what Smith Wigglesworth told an old conventional doubting clergyman. The Acts of the Apostles was written because the Apostles acted. Mm. With the anointing, initiative is needed. Mm. Jump. We shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I have said before, Christianity is a miracle religion, or it is nothing. Mm. Its most fundamental tenet is the resurrection. Yeah. If it never was, then our faith, all of it, is vain. If it is true, then other miracles are not only feasible, but likely. Mm -hmm. A miracle in modern minds isn't always what the Bible means. God will not square a circle or deny himself or make men free and stop them from doing evil at the same time. God is not in charge of absurdities, but impossibilities. Jesus was very precise saying that that which is impossible to man is possible to God. A miracle is not an impossibility to God, but an impossibility to man, something only God can do. Regarding the power to work miracles, we are not water reservoirs. A better picture is a water tap. A water tap does not possess water. It only releases it. That is all we do. As we proclaim the word of God, we dispense rivers of living waters from the master's reservoir. Now listen to this. I pray you will never forget this. The man everlastingly seeking God's will gets run over by the man doing it. Wow. Putting out fleeces all the time can be the devil's way of fleecing us. If Jesus said, go, why should he have to repeat it to you again? Are you so special? God has a most unusual calendar. It is for 1,000 years, but it has only one day on it. It is called today. Mm -hmm. God is a now God. When the Jews came back from captivity and had no temple, they made excuses and said that according to prophecy, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. The Lord rebuked them through Haggai and said that they could not expect to prosper until they did what obviously needed to be done. People think they will work for God when revival comes, but otherwise, it is not much use. But revivals begin when somebody decides to do some witnessing and evangelizing. There's never been a revival yet that came any other way but by somebody acting.
anybody can believe God when things are happening and half the nation is being born again. But in this wicked world, if we wait until conditions are better, revival will never come. Some say, I will go when the Holy Spirit moves me. The trouble is that the Holy Spirit can't move them. They say, I've not been called. Listen, if you have been anointed, the world lies before you. It is your parish. Is nothing happening in your area? Then now is the time to start things happening. You can gamble on God's help. God is looking for initiative, boldness, enterprise, and imagination. People are beseeching God for more and more power, but they are not doing much with the power they have. It is time to formulate plans to go to the brook, to pick out five smooth stones, and to tackle the giant. It is time to go to Samaria, as Philip did. Not even the apostles had been there, but Philip saw signs and wonders. The man of bold faith takes the city by the power of God. If you don't want to lose, let your faith loose and release the Holy Spirit. This is the victory, even your faith. All Christian witness aims to do two things, to speak of things that are real and to demonstrate them. The more I read John's gospel, the clearer those aims become. Preaching the gospel makes the gospel happen. The gospel is a news creator. You preach the good news and good news happens. John talks a great deal about water, as we shall see. Water is described chemically as H2O, two parts of hydrogen and one part oxygen, two gases. Mix them together in a container and all you get is gas. The gases are invisible and it is almost possible to believe they are not there. Many think that this is what preaching is. Mm -hmm. Talk, hot air, <laughs> gas. We talk about things that unbelieving people cannot see and which they don't think of as being real. Mm -hmm. Now, apply an electric spark to your mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. The gases immediately explode and become water. The invisible becomes visible, oh. real. That is how it happens with preaching. Yeah. You can present the gospel truths talking until you are blue in the face, mm -hmm. but without the touch of the Holy Spirit, these glorious truths mm -hmm. will remain hidden, unreal, mm -hmm. incomprehensible mm -hmm. to unbelievers. The Holy Spirit provides the spark mm. that ignites your words mm. and the gospel suddenly yeah. becomes the water of life. Mm. But the gospel has no power to change lives until you preach it. Mm. Then, with the assistance from the Spirit of God, the gospel becomes the power of God mm. unto salvation. 
Now we come to four kingdom principles of great significance for all Christian work. The first one is, Jesus can only be what you preach him to be. Jesus waits for us to say what he is. Preach him as the Savior, and he saves. If you don't, he can't. Preach him as a healer, and he heals. If you don't, he won't. Preach him as a forgiver, or as the giver of peace. Then he can be these things to those who hear. Preach the gospel, and the gospel happens. Now number two, God's sovereign will is worked out through us. Mark's gospel tells us that after he had ascended to heaven, Jesus worked with his disciples in Mark 16. We often talk about God's sovereign will, but he works his sovereign will through us, usually requiring us to do something first. Sovereignty does not mean secret. The word is grossly misunderstood and misused. God is indeed our sovereign Lord and God, but he is not unpredictable. If we don't know God's will, then we certainly ought to. His word is his will. Psalm 103 declares, he made known his ways to Moses his acts to the children of Israel. If God were wholly unpredictable, we could not possibly have any faith in him, but we can depend on his holy, impeccably divine character. In his sovereignty, God has planned to let us have a say in matters. Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing, he asked in Genesis 18. He does more than that. Jesus said, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Amen. Now, here is point number three. God works according to the scale we employ. Our measure of work is his measure. Consider the widow who had a jar of oil. Elisha told her to get as many vessels as she could. She begged and borrowed vessels and filled them all until they were no more. God can fill as many vessels as we bring to him. He can save as many souls and heal as many bodies as we give him the chance to save and to heal. We can have a parish outlook or a world outlook. Mm. And now the last point, number four. James says, every good gift comes from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. As the New King James Version puts it, God does not change like shifting shadows. The sun causes a shadow as it turns and the shadow moves. You see it on the sundial which is how it keeps time. When there is no shadow the sun is directly overhead at its zenith. God never casts a shadow at all because he is always at the zenith. 
and he never shifts from that perfect position. The light of God is ceaseless, not temporary, and always fully radiant. The Spirit of God is not flickering uncertainly around our lives. He abides with us. We can walk in confidence knowing that Jesus has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. In conclusion, if you will declare his whole word, his whole counsel, without taking out selected texts as outside our current dispensation, then you have a supernatural God on your hands. Remember, preach the gospel, and the gospel happens. When Jesus sees these people in life danger, the arm of the Lord extends. He reaches across the boiling sea. He grips those people, lifts those people, pulls them over, looks into their eyes, and says to them, Because I live, you shall live also. Remember, God is with you as much as he is with anyone else. Just preach the gospel, and the gospel happens.